I know you will be inspired by the message he will share with us today. Please welcome Mr. Steve Uzell. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marnie. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You know, wherever I go in the world on assignment, even in unbelievably remote places, I know that the odds of me being asked the question go way up every time I encounter another human being. I'll have my tripod set up. I'll be completely surrounded by photographic equipment. And a total stranger will walk right up to me and ask, what are you doing? <laughs> Human curiosity and our basic need to connect are much more powerful impulses than recognition of the obvious. It's true, isn't it? Well, you know, after being asked that question hundreds and hundreds of times, my own curiosity began to get the better of me, and I began to wonder what the reaction would be if I told people what I was really doing. So one day, about 15 years ago, in the beautiful city of Savannah, Georgia, and one of Savannah's beautiful squares, I had the opportunity to find out. It was a particularly complicated shoot. I had a cast and a crew, and a grandmother, out for a walk with her grandson, walked right in the middle of my set, came right up to me, and she said, what are you doing, taking pictures? <laughs> and as politely as I could, I looked at her and I said, actually, ma'am, I'm solving problems. Well, she looked at me over the top of her glasses, grabbed her grandson, backed him away from me so he couldn't get what she thought I had. <laughs> and then she came back and she scolded me and she said, well, you sure do look like you're taking pictures to me. <laughs> well, so much for what I really do, but the grandmother's right, isn't she? I mean, come on, come on, come on. What do we do as photographers? We take photographs. Well, actually, I rarely get asked to take photographs anymore. I get asked to make photographs all the time. And in order to make photographs, you have to solve problems. And what I'd like to share with you this morning is what the last 35 years of traveling this planet for some incredible clients has taught me about the creative problem-solving process. Well, where do we start? I'd like to start by answering the question all of you have. What is photography? have to do in with being an educator? Well, in my view, everyone in this room spends their day doing the same thing. All of us, as adults, spend our day solving problems. Sure, the tools and the vocabulary that you all use are just a little bit different than those that I use, but the principles that guide the continuum of your day are those that guide mine. And at the end of the day, all of us have the same charge. We have to solve whatever problems we're working on, and we have to come back with the goods, the metaphorical goods. Does it matter what those goods are? No. They might be imparting knowledge. It might be a product. It might be an objective. It might be a goal. Or the most powerful of all, an idea. Well, how do we ensure that we always come back with the goods? To explore that question, I'd like to take you all on a road trip. Christina, may I have the lights, please? The best place I have ever found to solve a problem, any kind of problem, is on the open road. Now, any of you who've had the opportunity to spend a little bit of time on a road that looks like this, well, you've experienced this amazing mind-opening phenomenon and you probably wonder right along with me, why does an open road always open your mind? And how does it work? Well, physiologically, I have no idea. <laughs> but I sure can't tell you what I've witnessed. I've taken hundreds of clients and crew with me on the road over the years, and I've watched the open road work its magic on all of them. Within an hour, our moods have brightened, and our troubles have resolved in solution. Why? Why does this always happen? 
Well, I call it the spirit of the open road. Your senses are filled with new sights and sounds and smells, and your mind is opened by these new experiences. Now, the lure of the open road for me began as a kid on family road trips. I was the one who could sit with my nose just plastered up against the window for hours on end watching the scenery go by and dreaming. One of the things that I loved the most was that the open road holds this wonderful mystery. You never know what's going to happen next. You never know what the road ahead is going to bring you. And that is a feeling I loved. Now, the spirit of the open road gives you what I believe is the first step in the creative problem-solving process. It allows you to take a step away from your immediate world, and it gives you a visual focal point. Today, we hear a whole lot about multitasking. And in a room full of consummate practitioners, I need only remind you that multitasking is really the opportunity to screw up more than one thing at a time. <laughs> Our lives are stuffed with traffic of all kinds, vehicular, pedestrian, plus emails, pages, faxes, cell phone, blackberries, iPhones, and the list goes on and on. And though my assignments take me to real open roads, they're getting harder and harder to find, so I had to find a way to translate the spirit of the open road into an attitude for problem solving. I had to find a way to access this state of mind whenever I wished and wherever I was, even sitting at my desk. Louis Pasteur said, chance favors the prepared mind. And those five words have a profound effect on my life. They'll have a profound effect on yours if you let them. Preparation lays the groundwork for magic to happen. After all, please consider that your eyes will only ever see what your mind is prepared to comprehend. If your mind won't comprehend it, your eyes won't even see it. Well, after five geographic assignments, I found myself wanting to go down some other creative roads, so I struck out on my own. And one of my first projects was a book celebrating the state of Maryland. One winter day, I rounded the corner, and I suddenly saw this scene developing. The two people that you see down in the lower right-hand corner had left the house and almost reached the barn. Notice now that the house is dark. Well, hoping that I would come upon a scene like this, I had preset two cameras on the seat next to me. I slid to a stop, grabbed the correct camera, ran across the road, jumped into a snowbank for a little bit of support, and boom, there it was. All of this took place in less than a minute, and there's now even a light on in the house. Well, this is a room filled with very smart people. I want you all to tell me, was this chance, was this preparation, or was this magic? I believe it was all three. And because of the magical connection between chance and preparation, I've added one more question to my list. In addition to the six questions of journalism, I've added the question that takes information and turns it into knowledge.